We are here this evening with artist and motivational speaker Lecrae. My name is Reggie Legend. I will be conducting and moderating the interview for this evening. I have a book of poetry out called Steel Waters, Duplicate Authenticity. I am also a motivational speaker, Christ-led, God-ordained. What's up? What's going on, y'all? Man. Lecrae, can you just like answer this question? That's your birth name, right? Yeah, my mama's real ghetto. My name is Lecrae. <laughs> That's my name. So, yeah. so does, does it have a meaning, though? Um, no, it does not have a meaning. It's the sound you get when you throw a bunch of spoons in a drawer. All right, all right. So that's just, that's what happened, man. That works, too. All right. Well, yeah. going on to the next question. Uh, Christian rap or holy hip-hop? I, I really, I'm, I'm be honest with you. When you use the term Christian, uh, I believe Christian is a noun, not an adjective. So Lecrae is a Christian. What I do is not. And so... Uh -huh. In the Bible, the Bible never uses Christian as an adjective. Like, those aren't Christian shoes. It's not a Christian hat. Um, Christian is a noun. People are Christians, not things. So right. that's, that's how I would, would rock with it. So, All right, cool, cool. Yeah. So, man, I heard uh, Jeremy Lin. He said he stated that he gets kind of hype before games off your music, man. Did you hear yeah. about that? Yeah, Jay Lin, that's my dude, man. Yeah, what you think about that, man? What'd that do for you when you heard that? Jay Lin, actually, see, I, I love Jay Lin because he's honest. He's like, man, I love Lecrae's music, but I can't listen to it too much before games because I might go out there and hurt myself. Nah. <laughs> and he, then he mess around and hurt himself. Man. So, but yeah, that's my dude. I appreciate you. Much love to Jay Lin, man. And, so, all right, so Jay Lin kind of endorsed you, and then you had the, the Grammys, 2011. Yeah. Man, what did that do for your, for, your, for your career, man? I mean, I know it's kind of an obvious question, but man, how, how did that affect you? Um, it validated me uh, as, an, as an artist, yeah. but I'm already accepted. So, you know, for me, I, I appreciate being honored and, and people uh, um, loving what I do and my gifts, but I'm a firm believer that, man, you, if you're going to respect the gift, you got to respect the giver. And, yeah. you yeah. know what I'm saying? It ain't me, man. So. Let's give it up for that one. Yeah. yeah. So I imagine after that Grammy, that BET Cypher invitation must have came kind of quick, huh? <laughs> How'd that come about? You know, it was, it was interesting because I got the opportunity to do it, but I, I, I declined because I was about to have a, a, a baby. Well, I wasn't. My wife was about to have a baby. <laughs> All right. and, um, and so, you know, I was like, man, I don't think I'll be able to do it. And, you know, we in the hospital. My wife just had uh, my, our son. And... Uh, I'm excited and oh uh, yeah yeah praise God you know I'm excited and um and I'm excited and I'm cool with not going to the BT joint and she was like so the baby's here you you go you can do the cipher now and I was just like are you serious she's like yeah you better you know like go and uh so you know shout out to my wife for for you know holding it down yeah, and yeah, yeah. um man yeah so That's the you, hard man. part was I only had like a couple of days to like figure out what I was gonna do you know when I got up there and so it was. Right, right. It was a dope experience, though. That's huge, though. That support from your spouse to yeah. be able to tell you to go do that, man. So oh, yeah. I, I understand that. Yeah, man. Yeah. But, I mean, so you only had a couple days to do that. But, I mean, I, th I think you kind of ripped it, though. What y'all say? Yeah. Yeah, that was official, man. You think you kind of opened the door for other, for other uh, entertainers to come through, other Christians, Christians to come yeah. through and do that? I would hope so. Um, I hope that I can create a pathway for believers to be able to use their gifts in, in markets and areas that traditionally people don't respect, you know, uh, a, a Christian worldview or Christian perspective. And I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that when it comes to the arts and entertainment, many people see what Christians do as kind of whack or corny. And so I, I challenge us to step up our craft and to work harder and to do well at it. Um, Tim, Tim Tebow and Jalen are not, they're not pros because... They're, they're Christians. They're pros because they're good. You know what I'm saying? Um, but they use their, 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 their talents to honor the Lord. And I just think, man, work hard at what you do. And, um, and you know, you, you'll be seated uh, in front of people that you never would have expected. So, How do you see the evolution of this genre of music over your career? Because, you know, it was kind of started off kind of slow, but now it's taken off. I mean, the production is there. The, the lyricism is there. The spirituality is there. How have you seen it evolve in your career? 
I think for me it's been good because I can b- just be straight out the gate and say, look, I'm a Christian. This is what I believe. I believe that God wrapped himself up in human flesh as a man named Jesus came to earth, died on a cross, resurrected. I can I can be that and say that. And I can say 116, Romans 116, I'm unashamed of the gospel. Like I can be that. And I like that's what's dope. You know, like I can I don't have to kind of dodge that. I can be that. But. At the same time, you know, I, I can still get the looks on um, some of the magazines and some of the networks that I've gotten the looks. And it just I think what it says is, man, that you can be authentically Christian and authentically whatever else. Like if you're a part of a culture, like I'm a part of hip hop culture is what I'm a part of. Just like you're a Chicago and you're a part of Chicago culture because you live here. And so you can be authentically Chicago and authentically Christian. And I think when you can walk in that, man, people will respect it. You know, people will respect if you hold your own, if you stand by your convictions, you don't waver. And I, I think that's what's what's been seen for me. Well, I think we can see by the, the turnout that people respect what you're doing, man. I'm grateful, man. I think Christians are kind of hungry for seeing us more in the media, and you're representing that well, so we appreciate that. Yeah, I'm glad to do appreciate all the support. You know what I'm saying? It's been a beautiful thing. How do you see the integration of technology in the production? Like, has it made it easier and then maybe less creative, or has it enhanced uh, the, the production of, of what you hear now? No, I think it's been... it's. It, like technologies enhance stuff, you know, especially for somebody like myself who's an independent artist. Um, I rely heavily on technology because, you know, you don't have a lot of the bells and the whistles that a lot of people who are, have major labels have. You don't have a lot of the connections. And so, you know, you're grateful for the Internet. You're grateful for people being able to access your music and people being able to get it. And you're, you're grateful for being able to deal with a producer who's a million miles away, but y'all can still collaborate and work on stuff, you know, where I can... FaceTime somebody on my phone and we can start talking about, you know, how we're doing stuff. And so, you know, it's, it's dope just to be able to, to rock that out. Yeah. They mentioned that you was going to talk about some of your struggles and your victories. Well, we're seeing some of your victories now, real time. Yeah. Uh, and I know that you, that we talked about this behind stage, like you, you respect that transparency and, re- and know that that transparency is needed for ministry. Yeah. So what are, what are some of the struggles that, that you encounter and that you've had? One is if if you are going to be an entertainer or you're going to be in front of the public eye, you're going to have to deal with a lot of criticism and a lot of scrutiny and a lot of people who are going to judge your motives who don't know you or your motives. And you're going to have to deal with that constantly. You know, you get bombarded with it every day. There's always somebody, if I leave a period off of my tweet, somebody's going to be like, you didn't put a period on what you said. And it's just every day that's going to happen to you. And so you got to be able to deal with that constant bombardment of criticism and people having an opinion about what you're doing and if you don't have a strong community of people around you if you don't have uh, people who can support you and who can tell you the truth about who you are and can be a voice that you can trust then you'll lose it you know and and i think we've seen that happen you know and so i think that's one of the struggles another one of the struggles is obviously you know as a christian i believe that um my self-worth is not found in me and me alone. I believe that God, because I'm made in his image, I have worth and value. And so um, I think you can get wrapped up in believing that it's about you and it's not about the giver of the gift itself. And I think that's always dangerous as well. And so you have to constantly keep people around you who can remind you that you ain't all that. <laughs> you know what I mean? I see a couple of youth out here in the audience, and I just want you to say that one last part again about where your worth stands and whose image you are made in and and how that validates you. Yeah, I I would say again, you know, I'm a firm believer that everyone is significant because you were made in the image of God. So if you don't feel like you're significant, you feel like you're worthless, um, you're believing a lie. You know, ultimately, you're believing a lie. You have intrinsic value. You have intrinsic worth and meaning. And I think that the greatest way to understand what it is you're here for and why you have purpose and meaning is to know the one that gave you the purpose and meaning. So, yeah. yeah. All right. Come on. On one of your other um, interviews, you had this, uh, there's this quote that came before the actual transcription. I just wanted to read that. It talked about some struggles or alluded to some struggles. It says, the co-founder of Powerhouse Reach Records is struggling to straddle the fence between secular rap's aversion to any Jesus talk and the religious rap world's sometimes snobbish dismissal of religionless hip hop. So how, how, how on point was that? That's good. It's not, uh, it's not a struggle for me. I think it's a struggle for, for people. For Christians, it's a struggle because I think a lot of Christians see everything as black and white. And 
we can be pious and judgmental and think that we, if you're not on this team, then you're beneath me. And that's, that's a terrible perspective. Um, there's only one kind of person in this world. That's a person who needs grace. And you need it and everybody else needs it as well. Um, and so I, I would say, for me, it's not a struggle. I'm not straddling the fence. I'm living out my faith as I do it. And sometimes it may not be Christian enough for these people. And sometimes it may not be uh, street enough for, for these people. But I got to be authentically who God made me to be. And so um, I, I, don't, I don't do music to try to please people by being fake. I'm going to be authentically who I am. And, and you're going to be able to experience that. And so I think that's why people resonate and they relate to it because... There's a lot more to life than just Tuesday night Bible study. You know what I'm saying? And if you if, if your content can't go beyond that, then people don't know that they, they think that's all you have to talk about. So, yeah. So you got this mixtape out, right? What's that called again? Church Clothes, is that? Yeah, Church Clothes. All right. So Turn up. you got a lot of secular producers on that album, man. Yeah. What's your anticipation of what people are going to say? Or have you already started getting flagged for that? This is one thing I would say. I wrote a blog on, on ReachRecords.com. It, you know, do yourself some, some, a favor. Read that blog. It's on ReachRecords.com. It's what we call a worldview. And, and you know, without getting long-winded, a worldview is how you see the world, right? So everybody has a paradigm that the way that they see the world. So, you know, when I got married, my family, we ate off paper plates. That's what we ate off of. My wife's family, they ate off of real plates. So we got married. I'm like, yo, let's put out the paper plates. She's like, no, we eating off real plates. I said, who going to wash these dishes? We don't... Because my worldview, my paradigm, we eat off paper plates. That's how I was raised. And so what had to happen for me was a deconstruction of my worldview. Like you had to deconstruct this to help me understand why we could eat off of regular plates at dinner time. You know what I'm saying? And so if I say family to you, you're going to think probably wife, kids, and, and you know, husband, wife, kids. If I say family in Asia, they're going to think grandma, grandpa, uncles, cousins. And so that's because we see things from a different perspective or paradigm. And I think when you use terms like secular and, and sacred, like everybody has a perspective or paradigm. And we would have to do some deconstruction for you to understand what I'm saying and why I'm saying the things that I'm saying. So for me, I'm going to be honest with you. I believe that Psalms 24 talks about the earth is the Lord's and everything they're in. So everything belongs to God anyway. So really what is secular if the world in and of itself is God's, right? So secular has more to do with the intent than the content. If someone intentionally is saying, no, I don't want this to be about God, then that's an intent and not content. And so a lot of these producers you know, ninth one or so on and so forth. These are dudes that I've built relationships with. These are guys that I've, I've had conversations with. And, and it's been a great bond and, and a great experience. You know, we've been able to create music that challenged people's perspectives and, and so on and so forth. And I don't feel like it's a secular or sacred thing. I feel like ultimately everything belongs to God. And I'm just doing my part and playing my role in his bigger picture. So, All right. So what you would say is that there is no distinction. We have to tear down that wall, basically. So I, Yeah, I think the, the distinction is more about the content. You got a track with, with Lil Wayne, and I'm sure you caught some, some side eyes at that. But I see what you're trying to do, though. I mean, anything... I don't have a track with Lil Wayne. I heard it. No, no, no. That's YouTube, man. YouTube. The power of YouTube. YouTube? That's okay. the power of YouTube. But did, you get any, did, you get, did you catch anything from that, though? <laughs> nah, I, I didn't. And, and honestly, if I was going to do a song with somebody... It, it, like, what is our intention? Like, what are we trying to do? Right. You know, and that's what it would come down to. So uh, for me, it's not just frivolous. Like, oh, let's just do this because it feels good. It's let's put some thought into it. Let's figure out why we're doing what we're doing. I don't just make music to make it. Like, everything I do, there's some intentional um, thought behind it. And it's run through a filter of community who I can trust as well. So, yeah. Could you just walk us through real quick from your first album, Real Talk, all the way to through... What's your next project you got out? What you got coming? Gravity. Gravity. Yeah, I mean, you know, in our in our last little five minutes, I um, I try to give you the brief history of it. <laughs> um, yeah, man, you know, real talk is is me coming out the gate, hearing music, and saying, man, I really want to impact culture. I'm I'm listening to the radio. I'm not I'm 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 not hearing a perspective that I can resonate with. You know what I'm saying? I'm not hearing a perspective that I I, I agree with in hip hop. And so I said, well, if I'm not hearing it, I'm gonna make it. 
and so I made it and um and it, and I think it, it resonated with people and I articulated my faith and my perspective and I got to travel and in traveling I said man it's not enough to just make the music how can I put some feet to this and how can I start helping equip these people who are not being equipped and challenged who don't have the resources that I have and so we started a nonprofit called Reach Life and in starting Reach Life you know I saw a lot of change happen and I wanted to continue challenging people to say what happens after the music stops so I did that album after the music stops and I moved into inner city Memphis and lived in inner city Memphis for some years and and I wrestled there and I struggled with people and I ran into a lot of people you know who they just didn't get what I was trying to do and and I was helping them to understand that man I'm I'm not I don't have to conform to the culture you know I can be who God wants me to be and follow the scriptures and so I'm rebelling against the wave the current of this culture so I did the album called rebel and um you know, and then after Rebel, man, I, I moved to the ATL and man, it was a tough transition for me and I needed some rehabilitation. And uh, so I made rehab, uh, <laughs> both of them, both the rehabs to rehab, to be rehabilitated. And, um, and man, and since I've been in Atlanta, man, I've just grown in ways unexplainable. And I, as I run into people, especially in the industry, they want everything to be uh, magical and out of space and, and, and life is just all dreamy. And I'm like, no, nah, it's real out here and I'm going to bring you some some gravity and so yeah pretty good man you did that in like two minutes man <laughs> i tried to yeah yeah you know one of your one of my favorite tracks that you have is indwelling sin yeah and uh what, what was your thought process in doing it reminds me of dmx's damien yeah. Did you ever think about that correlation? I, didn't. I never did. Yeah, but it's more of a, a a core of salvation in in Christianity. So what was your thought process in coming up with that track? Really, man, I was I was in a hotel room. I usually travel with at least five dudes. In this particular occasion, I was by myself. I don't travel by myself. But I was by myself, and I was in a hotel room, and I was like, man, I'm hungry. I went out to get something to eat. And every vice that I have tried to holler at me that night. And I was like, oh, my gosh. I just locked myself in my hotel room and wrote that song. Like, my God, Lord, it's just everything's coming at me from all angles. And, uh, and what you got was indwelling sin. So... What you think about that uh that Jay Z Kanye West joint, man? What's which one is that? The one uh No Church in the Wild. Oh, listen to church clothes, I'll tell you what I think about it. All right. All right. <laughs> no, I think um, you know, everyone again, everyone has a perspective and a paradigm, but I believe that there is an absolute truth. And so I think, you know, you, we all have to wrestle with with what truth is. And so we can't just create it out of nowhere. And so, you know, I'm talking in the microphone. That's a true statement. You can't say all truth is relative because what you're saying is a true statement. It's an absolute statement by saying there's no absolutes. And so in saying that, I'd say that, you know, I, I don't believe that most people's perspective of church and God is accurate because most people don't read the Bible or know the Bible. And so, um, you know, so you hear that in culture at large. People just have a misinterpreted view of God and church. And some of that is our fault as Christians, and we need to step it up. So, yeah. I think that's a good place to end it. I know we, uh, we could go on and do this for hours, but we don't have that. They came to hear you on the mic with some beats going behind you. So we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. Can we thank Lecrae? Yeah, appreciate that, man. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and get off the stage. Hmm? Oh, yeah, we're going to do a little Q&A. We yeah, got yeah, some Q&A Q &A Q &A. out there. What's up, man? What's going on? Uh, my name's Jaquay. Good to meet uh, you. I want, good to meet you, too. I want to know how you started uh, Reach Records. Um, my, my partner, Ben, um, had a, a brilliant idea to start a record label, and he volunteered with me at a juvenile detention center, and I was constantly making songs for these dudes. And um, he just was like, man, what if we just put your, your music on? on wax and um and, and put it out there and uh you know i'd always you know i'd always wanted to do something like that i think he was just the catalyst and the motivator for me and uh the ball got rolling and the wheels got to spinning and man what you got was reach records you know what i'm saying so yeah ashanti petaway what's up craig what's up family um you biblical manhood is significant and i know it's been very instrumental in your life what are some things you think we can do as a local community, uh, very, I know you're doing the man up thing, but what are some things we can do to really instill biblical manhood in our communities? Yeah, I think first and foremost, like 95% of, um, of violent crimes are committed by men. 
95% of uh, sexual crimes are committed by men. And I think as the men go, so does the city. You know, and so if you don't, if you can get the men, um, a lot of times, man, you can see a lot of change happen in your own community, in your own cities. And so I think, first of all, it's just, it's just having that as a priority. It's just having that, having men on your radar and saying, you know, why, why, how come my church doesn't reach men? Maybe because your church is extremely, you know, not male friendly. You know what I'm saying? And so dudes is in there like, yeah, I don't want to be here, man. You know what I'm saying? Um, take them on mission trips because dudes don't want to just sit in church with white gloves on taking gum out of people's mouth. Like we want to do something aggressive. We want to challenge. We want to, you know, I was in Africa and I went to like seven different countries and we rode on a bus for 19 hours and we thugged it and we slept outside. You know, it was just, it was stuff that we can go home and be like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? What? You know what I mean? And, um, and I think it's necessary for you to consider men in that way. Um, outside of that, man, I, I think, um, it's just, is living it out ourselves as men. I didn't grow up with my father. I didn't have those examples, but I have to be adamant about learning. And I think, you know, a real man is going to reject passivity. He's going to accept responsibility. He's going to lead courageously. And, and he's not going to be a blame shifter. Dudes are constantly trying to pass the buck. Like, why didn't you get this done? Well, she did it, or he or my man's. And it's like, man, just accept responsibility for your actions. Um, you know, that's what Jesus did. He was a perfect man. He wasn't no flimsy, fluffy little lamb. He was a man. He was a carpenter. He's probably cut. So, you know what I'm saying? He was a man, you know, and he, you know, he went to the cross like a, like a G and accepted responsibility for our mistakes, but he was also a, a compassionate, loving person and, and, and he was faithful to his woman, the church. So be faithful to your women, partners. My name is Lauren Waters. I'm from Chicago, and um, I grew up on you uh, from KA. I remember the CD you know. Real Talk. KA. <laughs> you know. Yep, yep, yep. So um, my little brothers, um, they got a rap group and everything. So do you have any words or wisdom or advice for them coming up and doing ministry and actually walking it out and not just being on the stage? Yeah. So yeah. your words yeah, of wisdom I, would be I, nice. I would say kind of like my man was saying over here. He was just like asking what I do. And I'll say this. I say the light that shines the farthest shines the brightest at home. So if your light is shining way out there, it should be really bright in your own backyard. It's like a lighthouse. You can see a lighthouse light from way far away, but the closer you get to it, the brighter it is. And that should be your life. If, if your life is bright to people in far away places, then the people closest to you should be able to say, yo, man, you, you're real. Like, you're really challenging me. You're really changing me. And um, I think if, if they can be real with two people around, then they'll be real when, you know, 300 people are around. So, yeah. Hey, Lecrae. My name's Kenny. I'm from L.A. What um, up, Kenny? I just want to I want to ask you like as a body of believers that the people are here like what do you need a uh, prayer for like what do you see like with you coming out with this mixtape and then your new album coming out like what do you want us to pray for you cuz like you're like you're like the leader right now leading the way yeah and you're kind of just bringing a new revival and we just I personally, you know, I just want to help you with prayer, and there's a lot of power in prayer. And yeah, I, know, I appreciate that. I know you you agree to me on that one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, obviously, there's a big, big red target on my back um, for for my vocalness and for me just uh, being um, passionate about my faith and not being afraid to display that. And so, you know, people don't like it. Satan don't like it. And so that uh, you know, I'm I'm a target. You know what I'm saying? And I I embrace it. So just you know. I, I say, you know, my, my prayer is, is the S's is pr that, that God will protect me from Satan, sabotage and selfishness. You know what I'm saying? And so uh, that, that, that's, that's it for me right there. <laughs> yeah. What's up, Craig CD? What's um, happening? How is it as a, as a man who's traveling a lot, you're attracting a lot of attention. How do you stay uh, pure and above reproach to maintain your testimony throughout your ministry? Yeah, that's good. Um, there's a lot of different things. I, I think it's going to be different for everybody, but there's some consistent things. Um, for me, one, I travel with people all the time. I'm here with like five dudes. You know what I'm saying? So I always travel with people, people who are going to hold me down and they're going to know where, my, where I'm at and what I'm doing. Um, two is, you know, I have accountability. So, you know, I have brothers that are, are asking me hard questions on a regular basis and, and are, you know, hit me up saying, how's your heart? How's this? How's that going? What is this looking like? Um, and then, you know, three is, I think, uh, very valuable is, man, that you really, I have to view sin as sin. Like, I got to view it for what it is. I can't just kind of play with it. I can't dance with it. And so I have to look at it as dangerous. And so I think a lot of times we like to say, man, how close can I get before I fall off the edge? And sometimes, man, you, you need to just say, man, how far away can I get from this to be safe? You know what I'm saying? So, um, 
And it's different for everybody. It's different for everybody. Everybody has different temptations and different struggles. Some folks got to stay out of the shoe store. I don't. I'm cool. You know what I'm saying? But you may need to say, ah, you know what? I can't go to the shoe store today. You know? I mean, it's, everybody got their vices. So. Uh, all right. Right here. My name's Alani and I'm nine years old. My question is, how do you feel when people criticize you about rapping about Jesus? You know, I'd be lying if I said it it did not affect me. I'd be lying if I said, man, that's just how it's supposed to be. They hated him. They'll hate me, too. That's that's what I need to believe. Um, But there are constant times when it's frustrating and constant times when you know the only reason why um, you're being blacklisted or you're um, not given an opportunity is because of your, um, you know, your unashamedness to articulate what you believe in. And so, um, but it, it does come with the territory. Um, I do know that. And I'm, I, I guess I, I count it. I'm, I'm grateful because it, it means that I'm doing something right. You know what I mean? Um, it, it means I'm doing something right. Cause if, if nobody, if everybody loves me, I'm probably doing something wrong. Everybody shouldn't love me. <laughs> so, yeah. Hey, Craig, my name's Joe. I'm from Georgia. Yeah. And um, you touched on a little bit about the light, shining the light at home, but I work with a lot of young people, and today there's a, I mean, your music's strong, it's straight up, I feel like straight from the word. There's a disconnect, though, between serving in the local church and, you know, being the big guy that's up on the stage a lot, traveling around. How important is it to you, and what would you say to the young people that are here about being involved in their local church? It's biblical. I think it's, you know shame it's a shame if we don't have if we're not connected if we're not tied in and i and i don't mean like being on the prayer team or something along those lines what i mean is that how are you involved locally you know like with your with your community because it's not just about like showing up on sunday or wednesday at the building it's about how are you affecting the community around you how are you affecting your city you know as a body of believers and and i and i think that's crucial you know i think that's really important because you know what are you doing if you if you can if you can walk to your church every day and pass people who are dying and hurting and destitute and say hey you know have a good sunday i'm going to church over here i think that's a, a huge problem um and you know i also think if you're not wrestling with people um you're missing out on real life change see it's one thing to be on a stage and and everyone pats you on the back and says good job buddy you did a great thing but i don't have to stay there with anybody and wrestle through issues and so for me i i feel like i grow and i and i'm more connected and i have a, a real understanding of what god put me here to do when i get to wrestle with people on a regular basis and i get to disciple them and i get to go through their woes with them and, and their wrestles and their pains and i think if you're missing out on that you're missing out on the faith you know what i'm saying so yeah we've got the last one over here on the uh on your right hey lecrae what's up my name is rain burke i'm from bc canada oh. and uh woo, red white um, I got a question, a um, little bit of background real quick. I'm with a ministry team called Go Ministries, and we travel 40 weeks out of the year. Uh, we, we set up Christian concerts, youth camps, churches, detention centers, and stuff like that. We minister to young people all the time, and your music is some of our favorite stuff to play before and after service. And we tell kids all over the country to listen to your music. My question is, it's, it's been statistically proven that a youth decides where they want to be within the first 13 seconds of wherever they arrive at that place. So if you only have 13 seconds to tell a young person something that's going to change their life forever, what would you tell them? Well, I hope you're not timing me. <laughs> but um, I think it stems back to what I was saying initially. I think a lot of people struggle with the reality of identity, of significance. And I think people don't know what they're here for. Everyone wants to know what's the meaning of life. And I think w what ends up happening is people start looking for the meaning of life in and of themselves. And you're never going to find the meaning of life in yourself. That's not where it's found. And so the next thing people try to do is they say, well, I'm going to find a book to help me understand who I am. And they'll go get a book on, on like, you know, how to get healthier or how to be um, better, understand yourself emotionally or psychologically. But the problem there is that you're not just an emotional and physical and psychological creature. You're a spiritual creature. And being that you're a spiritual creature, 
those things aren't ultimately going to help you. You've been stamped in the image of God. You have purpose and worth and meaning. And until you understand that God created you in his image and desires for you to live to glorify him, which you can't do in and of yourselves. And so what, what he ultimately does is he says, listen, you're going to fail at trying to glorify me in and of yourself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fulfill all my righteous requirements in Jesus. Jesus comes and lives and fulfills all the righteous requirements that we can never live up to. And then he says, and then I'm going to die in your place because because you aren't good enough. You do deserve to be cast away. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to take that punishment upon my own back. And now I offer you the righteousness that you never would have had in myself. So I'm perfect. I have it together. You don't. But you do have meaning and worth, and I want you to live that out. So I'm going to give you my righteousness. I'm going to give you, um, I'm going to wipe away your crimes, and I'm going to embrace you and adopt you. And that's when you really begin to understand why you were created, what you're here for, and live that out. And, you know, that, that's 25, 30 seconds probably, but I don't, a minute and 15. But that's what I would say. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. How's everybody feeling tonight? Good? Yeah. Awesome. So we're going to get ready. Um, Lecrae is going to get ready to play. And you guys psyched? All right. All right. Let's Thank you go. so much. Trying to be no superstar Chicks in the click that'll pull your car Dudes in the street like cops and cars You ain't heard the truth today, I promise we'll be back Click duck, Bodhi D I'll say it all serious Click duck, Bodhi D I'll ask We click duck, Bodhi D We all say it all serious Click duck, Bodhi D You know we click duck, Bodhi D Hey, we click duck, Bodhi D Hey, we click duck, Bodhi D I put a boulder in a meter This one right here's a heater Trying to get off in my zone Watch me hit these wide receivers If you ain't a believer I'm looking for conversion My 16 is a sermon Get your hands up in the service I'm going to bring that realness Go hard, I got to kill this They telling me I'm sick I already know I got that illness That 808 up heavy My adrenaline got me sweaty I don't think these people ready I was fast if they let me now it's ashes to ashes, dirt to dirt A black rose without a chance to grasp her worth She ain't never seen God in a beating Only seen God in a bleeding And some are gonna lie and hate and make her feel like she's a heathen No cry for me, cry for me, this is how it goes But John knows all of your woes, my black rose yeah. Let's go! Someone say church, close! Say church, close! R.I.P. to Dr. Kang I ain't tryna hate on my own kind But Alan Jesse don't speak for me I'm probably gonna catch some flat man But I'ma swallow this pill like Pac-Man Some of these folks won't tell the truth Too busy trying to get them racks, man Church trying to rob my paychecks Probably was probably having day six Past the minute relating hurting women I wonder what she's gonna slay next Books still pimping them hope books Like I don't know how broke looks And telling me that I'm gonna reap a meal If I sow into these low crooks Plus I know what girl this, yes, get up, I'm right. This, uh, started with hanging posters on my bedroom walls To battle rapping for status up in the schoolhouse Just call me double sushi, thought I was too raw And hip-hop was my home, I had my shoes off Sixth grade in high school, skip a whole dream If I don't blow up, then maybe I'll try the school thing I went to college to do my family a favor But I couldn't pick a major, cause I wanted to be major I tried selling work, but it didn't work So I worked shop and sent a clerk for attention, but they don't know how to bait us Keep that hate on hiatus Big up to my creator No big bang, just a banger Tell that DJ to bang it and say this Say, I know I know Say, I know Say, I know I know, I know. I know. They talking crazy I know. They looking crazy I know. They talking regular I know. Hey I know what they saying, I ain't promised that I'm cool though I know what they saying, but I promise that I'm cool though I know what they saying
Real skinny, loud color tennies, body marked up like graffiti. I don't push a Maserati, Beamer, Benz, or Billy. And hey, yeah, I roll a foreign, at least I'm looking spiffy. Hey, go ahead and doubt us, what you know about us? And we ain't gotta follow, then we take another route. No, we ain't blowing trees, bro. Open up my window. I see you popping tags, but you know that's why your in, 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 in slow. I try to tell them we was coming, gone, let us in. Why they hating like we all a bunch of hooligans? No gimmicks, spirit in my lyrics. Now when people hear it, they gon' love it. But hold up, ladies and gentlemen, you are now witnessing God using hip hop to redeem and glorify himself, y'all. So come on, hey, what, come on, we tell them, yes, yes.